Hey guys, welcome back. Here's another Proxmox video in our series. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to rename your VM or virtual machine ID to something else. So as you can see, we have a VM here, 299, 298, and we have 100. Now, usually when you're joining two Proxmox servers together in a cluster environment, you know, you might have another VM in that other uh, Proxmox that has that same ID, right? So when you join those servers kind of together, um, they can't have the same ID. So hence why we need to change this VM 100 to something like 297. And then we'll be able to join this uh, host to this host in a cluster environment and then uh, everything will marry together. So to, in order to change this ID, we need to first power down the machine. So let's go ahead and connect to our virtual machine here and shut it down. And there's two things we need to do. So the first thing we need to do is edit the virtual machine config file. The second thing we need to do is actually rename the virtual disk name. So there's two things we have to do here. So I'm going to show you step by step. So first, let's go ahead and go to uh, WinSCP. If you don't have that, download it. And then you're going to want to connect to your host that we're changing the name in. Once you get into that server, you want to explore this location. So etc, pve, nodes, and then you, the name of the server. And then go to qemu-server. Once in there, these are all your config files reside in your Proxmox environment. So we're just gonna simply right click on here and rename. And we're gonna change this to 297. And as you see, as soon as we change that config file, if we go back to our Proxmox environment, you can see the 297 just reflected and changed and you're like, hey, I'm good to go, right? Not necessarily because when you try to yet again, move this to a cluster environment, it's gonna, I think, hinder because the hard disk name is still that same name. You can see it's VM-100 here. And if I go to this VM, it's gonna say 298. So let's go ahead and just keep everything the same so nothing gets screwy because if you move this, so if, let's say you migrate this uh, VM to that other host that's got the 100 ID, that's gonna have the same name as that uh, virtual disk. So that's where you're going to get that hindering. So you want to make sure you just change it. If you're going to change it there, change it in the other location as well. So now for that change, we actually need to open up PuTTY. So before we change that, let's go to our local LVM because that's where our data stores are at. And you can see the name here, VM-100-0 is what we're looking to change. You can't just go into WinSCP and just change it in the in file structure you actually have to go into SSH and then let's do LS and we want to go to dev slash PVE slash enter and then do LS and then now you can see our directory here you can see all of our v VM virtual disks in here and we want to change that VM dash 100 disk dash zero so to change that, it's a simple command. That's just LV rename. And then we're putting the path to that virtual disk. And then we're putting the path of what we want it to change to. Hit enter. Boom. Now let's do another LS so we can list what's in there. And you can see that name has now changed and reflected. Now in your browser, you can still see it's still 100. But we just need to refresh. And boom. 297 now. So that's perfect. So now you're thinking like, hey, I'm all done. Not necessarily, because now if you try to boot up this VM, it's not going to boot because we still need to change it here. So go to your hard disk, hit edit. Now you can do this in uh, the config. So let's go ahead and do that because it looks like, you, yeah, you, you can't change it. So we actually have to go in the config. So let's go into WinSCP. That file name we just renamed, go and right click and hit edit. And then we're going to change the line here where it says VM-100. And we're going to change that to... 297 hit save close out and then we come over here and you can see it already changed and reflected here so now you should be able to go ahead and boot this up now just in case if anything goes haywire i would definitely do a backup before you do all this 
but I've done it many times and I've had no issues. And you can see, boom, our Windows uh, server is booting back up and we change all those configurations. And now we are ready to go ahead and cluster this host to our main cluster. So that'll be in a new video that we're gonna be posting soon. And we're gonna show you how to create a new cluster and cluster one or two Proxmox servers or up to five. I mean, you can do as many as you want, just depending on how many servers you have. And you can see it fully work because our VM fully booted up here into our Windows server box and we can log in and everything's happening, running okay. Hope this video was helpful, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.